Hello and welcome to the instructional video on how to create a new DDP. As a quick review, I'd like to cover the items that should be completed at this point. By now, you should at the very least have the Loop package installed in your Salesforce account. Now that you have Loop installed in your Salesforce account, you can begin creating new DDPs. Creating a DDP is simple. DrawLoop will provide you as an admin with a point and click interface called the DDP wizard. This wizard will request information for what will eventually become attributes of your DDP. Such attributes include security, methods for delivery, any relationships that may exist between your Salesforce objects, and your template files. Once the DDP record is created by the admin, the end user can then leverage that record on the Loop Plus page. The Loop Plus page will request a contact to be both the recipient of any emails that are sent, as well as the contact whose information is merged into the template files. In addition to this, the user may also check off any optional documents that he or she may want to include in their output file, and then finally the method they want to leverage for delivery. In a moment, we will begin our walkthrough. In this walkthrough, we will create a proposal DDP that will consist of four template files two which will be required, and two which will be optional to the end user. The required documents will consist of a proposal and a quote, both are in Word format. The optional documents will consist of a white paper document in PDF and a company profile in PowerPoint. Options for delivery will be storage back to Salesforce, Salesforce email, and a download link for the end user. As for insert updates, we will be updating existing opportunity fields once the document is generated, creating a new chatter post that will include the output file, and then finally creating a new follow-up task for the end user. The proposal DDP will merge information across multiple objects. These objects include the opportunity, which will also be the starting point of our DDP, in addition to the accounts, opportunity line items, a billing contact which is located within a lookup on the opportunity, and the competitor object which is a related list on the opportunity. And now we will begin the walkthrough portion of this video. To begin creating your new DDP, navigate to the Loop application. Once you are inside the Loop application, select the DDPs tab and choose the New button to initiate the DDP wizard. Once the DDP wizard has initiated, complete the basics tab. The first field you will want to complete is the DDP name. This will be the label that the user sees on the Loop Plus page in step two. Next, you must complete the output file name. This will be the title of the document that's returned to the end user. It can be both static and dynamic. For internal purposes, you can include a description if you have a lot of similar DDPs. As an example, if you have more than one proposal, you can insert a description to help you distinguish one proposal from the other. Next, you must choose a DDP starting object. This will be both the primary source of information for your output file and where the user will deploy the DDP. Once you've finished the information section, move on to the options. The first option is to force a contact selection to be required. This means that the user will be forced to choose a contact in the dropdown within step one of the Loop Plus page. Leaving this option unchecked means that the user can bypass step one and move on to any other steps left within the page. Next, you must choose whether or not the user can include attachments in their output file. Selecting allow means that they will have the option of including at least one document from notes and attachments on the DDP starting object. Selecting require means they are forced to include at least one of these attachments within their output. The final section of the basics tab is security. Here the admin can choose which profiles and roles will have access to the DDP they are creating. If a user's profile or role is excluded from this section, they will not be able to see the DDP in step two of the Loop Plus page. Once the basics tab is complete, Select the Next button at the top of the DDP wizard to move on to Delivery Options. The Delivery Options tab gives admins the UI necessary to create delivery methods that the end user can leverage on the Loop Plus page. 
Here they will choose which type of delivery method the users will have access to, what the label of that method will be, whether or not storage is allowed or required, and finally, what the document output type will be when that delivery method is leveraged. All of the delivery options created in this UI will be reflected in step three of the Loop Plus page. Once you are finished creating your delivery methods, select Next at the top of the DDP wizard to move on to the Relationships tab. Here you can define any relationships that may exist between your Salesforce objects. For our example, we know that we need at least two relationships. One that relates the opportunity object to the contact so we can pull the billing contacts information from a lookup field. In addition, we'll need a second relationship that links the competitor object to the opportunity. Establishing relationships is easy. To begin, you must first select an object that you have already established in your DDP. In our case, we are barely beginning, so we will first select our starting object, which is the opportunity. Next, we will establish a new relationship to an object with our first selection, in this case, a contact. This new relationship will allow us to pull information from a contact lookup field on the opportunity into our template files. Now we are going to establish another relationship, this time to the competitor object. Again, we are going to select opportunity in the first dropdown as our starting object and relate it to the competitor object in selection two. This new relationship now allows us to merge in a list of competitors into our template files using field tags applied to us in our field tagger. If you are using relationships to bring in a list of records into your template files, you have further controls that you can use in the relationships tab. For instance, the order by field allows you to choose a field within your relating object that will control the order in which the records populate your document. You can also decide whether this field should come into the document in descending or ascending order by selecting the checkbox in the second to last column of the relationships tab. Finally, you can control the fashion in which your records replicate within your template file by choosing a value in the copy type column. Once you are done configuring your relationships, select the next button at the top of the DDP wizard to move on to insert updates. The insert updates tab allows you to create actions that will occur in conjunction with the generation of your output file. In our example, we will be creating three insert updates, a field update back to the opportunity, a chatter post, and a follow-up task. Let's begin with the opportunity field update. Select field update in the type dropdown, then move on to the object name. Because we want to update a field on the opportunity object, we must select the opportunity value in this dropdown. Next, we must select the field to update. Finally, we must choose a value to update this field with. In this case, we want to update the stage to close one once the proposal is generated. Now let's move on and create a chatter post. Select chatter post and the type dropdown, then begin filling out the subject of your chatter post. Note that the subject of your chatter post can be both static and dynamic. You can use the field tagger in the next step to leverage in your subject line. Now you must choose which object the chatter post will post to. Do you want it to post to the opportunity record, to the related account, or the related contact? Checking the include DDP output and post checkbox will automatically include the generated output in the chatter post once it's created. Now we can finally create our follow-up task. Select task in the type dropdown and begin filling in your subject line. Similar to the chatter post, the subject line of your follow-up task can be both static and dynamic. Feel free to use any field tags in the Tag Documents tab to make a more personalized follow-up task. With our software, you can make the follow-up task due either today or in the future. To make it in the future, select Today Plus in the Date dropdown and the number of days in the future you want the follow-up task to be due in the next field. Finally, select the status for your follow-up task. 
The way we have designed this DDP so far, all three of these actions will occur when we create the sales proposal from an opportunity record. Once all insert updates are created, you can hit next at the top of the DDP wizard to move on to the Tag Documents tab. The Tag Documents tab contains the Field Tagger. This is a tool that Drawlib has designed to help you map your Salesforce fields to your template files for merging purposes. The way it works is you first select your document type that you wish to tag up. In the main object dropdown, you will see both your starting objects and any other objects that you've established in the Relationships tab. Depending on what your starting object is, you may also see the account object, in addition to the opportunity line items and product objects in the main object dropdown. If you select a main object and a field, you will be given a field tag to place in your template files so that it can pull information from Salesforce into your documents when the DDP generates an output file. Tagging your document is the most time-consuming task when creating a new DDP. As a best practice, we recommend moving on from this step if you feel your document will require too many tags and time out the DDP wizard. DDP files is the last step of the DDP wizard. Here you'll be able to upload one or several documents from either your documents folders, content libraries, or your computer. You will have the option of making these documents required or optional. In addition, you can control the order of your DDP files by selecting a number in the order column of the DDP files tab. Once you have finished uploading all of your documents, select the Save button to complete the DDP creation process. This will take you to the DDP detail page. You can make further changes to your DDP record after you've completed the DDP wizard. For more information, we recommend that you reference the Manage DDPs tab on the support site. To test the record you've already created, you can create a button for your DDP starting object and run it manually. If you are running from a standard object, there is already a button that has come with the loop managed package. Now you must go to a record on your DDP starting object and push a button that calls our service. For this demonstration, we're going to generate a sales proposal for the Inatech 2013 opportunity record. Notice that currently there is no chatter post, the opportunity stage is set to negotiation review, the billing contact is bill, also we have three related products, two opportunity competitors, no follow-up tasks. When we generate this document, a chatter post will be created, a follow-up task will be generated, and the opportunity stage will be changed to close one. I'm going to select the Loop Plus button at the top of the opportunity page and be taken to the Loop Plus screen. If you do not know how to create a custom button, please reference the Button Click Deployment Support page on our support site. Complete the Loop Plus page and select Run. For this demo, we will choose the Download Delivery option so we can receive a link that will allow us to download the output file to our computer. As you can see in this PDF file, we successfully have merged information from the opportunity, related account, billing contact, opportunity competitors, and opportunity line items. You can also see that the optional documents that were selected on the Loop Plus page are appended to the end of the proposal and quote. And if we refer back to the opportunity, we can see that there's been a chatter post created with the output file included. The opportunity stage has been changed to close one. And there's also been a follow-up task created for Napoleon. And that more or less is how a new DDP record is created using DrawLoop's DDP wizard. Now I'd like to provide you with some next steps to getting implemented. First order of action is creating your own DDP record. This DDP record needs to contain its own template files, options for delivery, and insert updates if necessary. Once you've created a new DDP record, you must then configure a deployment for your users to leverage the DDP. This deployment can be a button click, a link field, mass delivery from a Salesforce list view, 
or workflow role that will automatically request the DDP to generate the document. And that concludes this video. Thank you for watching and please feel free to move on to the next step of your implementation configuring a deployment.